Hello and welcome to another video by the AM Academy. Now in our previous video, we unboxed and calibrated the Einscan HX handheld scanner. And what is so special about this one is that it is a hybrid scanner. It can use both visible LED light or blue light laser lines in order to pick up the model that you want to scan. We're gonna do each of those in a separate video. So for this one, I wanna pick up this T-Rex skull. Uh, we have 3 printed this one a while back. Uh, it is made out of white PLA on a Pro 2 Plus. No, it was printed on an N2 Plus by Race 3 d So cool printers, you can check those out too. But what I want to do now is actually 3D scan this using visible LED light. And in the software, that is called the Rapid Scan Mode. The Rapid Scan Mode is less accurate, but considerably faster than the Laser Scan Mode. On top of that, uh, what makes it special is that it can not only um, work without any markers, so I can just have this model as is, I don't need to put anything on it, um, and what I can do is pick up a texture as well, so a surface color. I'm not going to do that for this one, well, because my model is all white, it's kind of boring, uh, but in theory it would be possible. I could select uh, the texture scan right here, and then it would start picking up the uh, surface color of my model as well and save that into my scan. I'm going to go with a non-texture scan and in this case because the whole geometry is seen by the scanner at one at, at a time you can have different modes of alignment. Now in laser scanning there's only markers alignment. You don't have a choice you will need markers but right now I could also just um, align by features, which means it checks what it's currently seeing against what it has previously seen and tries to align those. Does not work well with um, very repetitive objects. So a round cylinder, for example, that's not gonna work well. But for something as detailed as the skull, this is perfect. There is also a hybrid alignment mode, or if you do decide to go for a texture scan, a texture alignment mode, where it tries to pick up and uh, align the colors to one another. So I'm going to stick with the uh, features because that's just the best suited to my current scan and then I can select a resolution as well all the way up to 0.25 millimeters between the points. Now what's important to keep in mind is the resolution does not equal accuracy. What we're talking about here is the distance between two points in the resulting 3D mesh. Whereas the accuracy, well, that's the measured distance from the object to the scanner and, you know, the, the uh, geometrical accuracy, whereas the resolution is how detailed it can be. Now, there are no super fine features on this. Uh, a 0.7 millimeter distance is considered high detail for this one. 1.0 millimeters is medium. That will be entirely sufficient for me because I don't have any features that are finer than one millimeter and uh, the curves need, don't need to be that accurate either. Uh, a higher resolution, of course, results in more uh, computer resource usage and a possibly a slower scan, most importantly, more calculation time when meshing the model later on. So, medium detail is entirely sufficient for me, but this entirely depends on your specific application. So I'm going to click Apply, and now I'm already able to start scanning. I'm going to place it down this way first. I'm going to take the scanner, and then on the back, there's the little uh, play button, which starts a scan preview. Uh, so right now I could see what my part looks like. And in the little image in the top left corner, we can see it is very, very bright red. And that usually means that it's overexposed. So using the buttons on the back of the scanner, I can adjust my uh, brightness uh, to go down a bit. I don't want my entire skull to be red uh, if I only have a few single spots that shouldn't be as much of an issue. So right here for the white model, I'm gonna stay at six out of 19. And then by pressing the play button again, I start actually scanning my model. So we can see, I'm gonna start picking it up now, just like this. Up, oh, and that's what happens when it can't see enough features to align, uh, and then it'll pick it back up. I can't get too far away from the model or the scan will stop working. Uh, you will see that on the bar of lights at the very left-hand side, uh, that is an indicator of whether I am too close or too far from my model. I also have little LED lights on the back of the scanner that tell me the same thing. Um, they are green when I have the correct distance, they will turn red when I'm too far away, and blue when I am too close. Um, so I'm going to pause here, rotate my skull 180 degrees and start back up. 
Now I'm going to have to look at somewhere where the uh, scanner previously was so it can align properly. And I'm going to do that via this uh, piece of foam back here, then press the start button again. So it starts scanning once more. And now I can try to pick up the other side of my T-Rex skull. So just like this. And now go around, pick up all of this. I think that looks pretty good. Ah, come on, you've seen this before. So struggling a bit because it is very bright in here and then a white model is just uh, kind of torturing the scanner a bit. But uh, I wanted to see how it would do. It's no point doing models that are easy to scan. We're trying to stress test it a tiny bit here. I'm gonna try and see whether I can get into the back of the head as well, because I, I can use that to align future scans. So I'm gonna do this for the time being. That looks pretty good. So now I've covered everything on the top, but what about the underside? I'm gonna have to do that in the next step. So for now, uh, this right here is my scan model. And what I will do now is I will click the cutting plane tool and then I will hold down shift and select some of my table that I scanned because I want all of that table to go away. I don't need the table. So I'm going to have this. Uh, it, it basically selected different areas of points and then I say create the plane and then I can move this a tiny bit to adjust. So this right here looks pretty good. Uh, it shouldn't cut away a lot of my T-Rex skull, or none of it even, maybe a tiny bit at the tooth uh, over here. But all of the table will be gone, so that's great. Click Apply. And now we've gotten rid of all of that unnecessary table. I'm going to delete the cutting plane again, because I'll keep scanning now. So yes, I do this. And now, because I, I, you know, I, I, I turned it, uh, upside down, I can now keep scanning. I will just click the pl uh, play button again, go back into the preview, wait until I have aligned the model somewhere. Come on, you know where this is, that's the underside. There we go, now it's found it. Uh, so you don't want to press start before you've uh, basically let the software align your model. So, it looks a bit off, but I think it should be fine. And, uh, Nope, it's not found it. So let's try this again. I'll turn the brightness down a bit more. Come on, scanner, you've seen this. You know where this is. Yes, that's exactly where I want you to be. Press start and start scanning once more. And now I can pick up not only the back of the skull here, but also some of the areas I missed on the side just with the different view angle from the top down now. And then I can get this whole area with the teeth. So the upper jawline. Uh, move around a bit. Try and pick everything up. There we go. Get into that hole over there. So that's not just a blank spot. Go around this side. Pick up all the teeth as best as I can, and then I want to get into this hole over here so I can pick that one up fully. Try to get that one from the top, but that will probably not work too well. I got some of it. Okay, I think this looks pretty good at this point. Uh, I will stop scanning. And then, uh, my, my problem now is that if I cut this all away, uh, I will once again cut away some of my skull as well. And um, something I want to try here is actually mark some of it. Oh, uh, my mouse just went on a little uh, vacation. And then click this button down here, connected domain. And I'm hoping that the skull isn't actually connected to the table. This is perfect because it shows you uh, how easy it is to then just delete the entire table away, keep my skull intact. And these last little tidbits over here that uh, are still floating around, I can easily select and delete manually. So now I've got my skull scanned from basically every direction with no unnecessary areas or material whatsoever. So I'm going to click uh, the little check mark to accept this. This looks great. Uh, and then after this, basically the next steps 
or to actually uh, first optimize the point cloud or generate a point cloud. You do that by pressing the stop button. And then you can post process the mesh a tiny bit, or the point uh, is what I should have said. And then, um, yeah. So right now, it's really struggling to encode this. Generating a point cloud out of this is crazy difficult. It takes a lot of computing power and will depend on the speed of your computer. I hope I'm not, as, I'm not too choppy. The encoding of my PC is really struggling uh, trying to generate a point cloud and picking me up at the same time. So now that we have our point cloud, we can see this is really a beautiful model. It's worked very well. I've missed a tiny bit of the front teeth over here. So that will be an issue. Um, I think I'll go back and fix that because uh, I don't want that to be this bad. So what I'll do is I'll just keep the skull like this this time and I'll press the start button once again. And now same procedure as every time. I wait for it to align, press the start button so it can pick it up. Now I've already picked up those teeth, but I want to get a bit inside the skull as well. There we go. And now I need to make sure I get rid of the table again. So I'll get some of that, get your de connected domain, uh, delete, come on. Okay, it's, there we go, now it worked. And then I want you to go away as well. Woo, that was close. That bit, go away. And there's still a speck of annoying table, go away, perfect. So now I've fixed the teeth, I just picked them up real quick. Uh, in another scan and I no longer have as big a hole up there. Once again, generate point cloud. Uh, this will once again stress test your computer a bit. The powerful your computer, the smoother this operation. And once again, if I had set the resolution even higher, so even more detailed, this would take even more processing power and would take longer. So there's no point scanning a huge model like this with an accuracy of 0. 2 to 5 millimeters between the points, that just doesn't make any sense. There are no features that need to be picked up at that great detail. Okay, so I've got my model, and uh, once I'm happy with it, I could cut away areas, I could, you know, scan more if I wanted to. After I'm done, there's this little uh, triangle pyramid over there that I'm now going to click, and I now have the choice between an unwater type or a water type model. Difference between the two is unwatertight is just the surfaces. The watertight model will close up all the holes that the software can find. For now, I'll just keep the unwatertight setting uh, enabled and then all the recommended parameters, just click apply. It will now generate a 3D mesh. Same procedure as before, it takes a lot of computing power. The higher resolution, the more difficult it is, uh, but it is considerably quicker as we just saw. And uh, then I can uh, look at my mesh. I'm quite happy with this. It did make a hole over here, which is a bit funny, uh, but I'll just keep it as is. I can fill that up now using all the options that the software still gives me. So I can select this hole uh, and let the software close it up just like that. There we go. And you cannot find it anymore. Uh, you could do that with all the holes in the model. You can uh, simplify your model uh, to you know reduce size, reduce uh, complexity. Uh, you can optimize the mesh, you can smooth the model. So all of these options still available in the software, but the scanning portion of this model is done. So I am happy and uh, I'm basically finished. Now I can use the little save icon at the side to save my model as an STL file, OBJ file, 3MF file, whatever uh, suits your needs. And then you've got this beautiful skull ready for uh, use in a 3D printer, in a CAD CAM software, whatever you actually wanted the 3D model for. So thank you very much for watching this video. That's all I have right now. In the next one, I will be scanning with the laser light mode. Uh, so stay tuned for that one. Please leave any questions or comments uh, down below. Uh, any feedback is greatly appreciated. And um, yeah, stay sub subscribed if you want more videos like this one. Thank you very much for watching and have a great day.